Hi, this is Jim Janesey. In this video, I'm going to show you a fairly easy way to set up the Java environment for yourself so that you can be productive in doing one of the capstone projects in CSC 200, if you wish, the project dealing with Java. And just to give you a hint on how this could work if you were doing Java in some other programming class. First of all, let me bring up the directory here of this computer. What I've done is to install the Java compiler and program files where it normally would be, but everything that I've got as far as Java programs go, I created a folder named J. And the reason for that is a one letter folder name is kind of easy to type, easier than some longer name. What you see here from this point to this point in this listing of files is either Java programs or a little bit of data. There's one other data file I've also given you here, one called sample. What you see in between here is some files that I'll discuss with you as we move along through this demonstration. What we're going to do at this point is to look at the very simplest of these programs. And the way we're going to do that, I'm going to right mouse click on it and choose edit. And that brings up a program called Notepad. Now what I'm going to do here is to tile these screens on my desktop. And the way I'm going to do that is to click this center button here so that I can have some control over the size of these screens. This is the list of files, the directory. This is my editor. And I think what I'm going to do is to put that editor for the moment right here. We'll work on the code this way. Every one of the Java programs will be named something like this. And it's very critical that that name appear here in this third line of the program. You'll notice that I've named these programs in kind of a strange way, A and then 0. And down here you'll see there's A1, A2, A3, A4, 5. That's all that you're required to do anything with in the CSC 200 capstone. But there are two other programs I've put in here just to give you an example of something that's going to be kind of neat to see. And that's B for the second section in the workbook that I've written on this. C and then D are the third and the fourth sections. So you'll have to pay attention to the fact that Java is case sensitive. You can't type that A as a lowercase a. It would be a different name than the capital A zero underscore hello. Here's the program. What are we going to do with it to make this thing run? Well, all this program is going to intend to do is to put this little message, hi there you lucky people, on the screen. In order to do that, though, we're going to have to take this kind of code, which we can understand in English, and we have to turn it into a form that the Java runtime environment can understand. In other words, it has to be processed. That preparation process is called compiling. And so I am going to suggest that we create just a little bit of code. And I've got a set of it prepared here that I'm now going to take a look at. and. Since this program is called A0, I'm going to open this one up with edit. And you'll see that it's called prep A0. Now, this language in here may look a little bit funny, but it's really quite simple. What you have here is simply a bunch of statements that you'll have to have. And in fact, it will have to be something like this. And I give you this code. The only thing you have to do in preparing this little set of, of information, which are commands to the computer to compile this program, you'll have to have these first couple of lines. This is the Java compiler. And we put here the full name of the program, the same as this. This last line is just a comment to let you know that this processing has ended. The Java compiler is a bit terse in what it does. This Java compiler does process this code, which is what you see here. This code, which is named in a file of exactly the same name, is more English-like than Java can understand. The Java compiler, G-A-V-A-C, which you get when you install the Java compiler, which you download from Oracle Corporation, that can take this file of information, which you see here, and turn it into an intermediate form. It will name it the same as this in the front part, but the last part will be called dot class. 
And a class then is executable by the Java runtime environment. It will process and do what we expect it to do. So here we have a command file. Now I save this as prep a0.bat. That is the name of the file in which I've stored it, and you see that file name right down here. Now in order to run this file, now I'll spread this around just a little bit here. In order to run this file, I need to use the command prompt. And this is really kind of crude when it comes to doing computer work, because these days we expect this kind of a graphic user interface, but this compiler is designed for the Unix environment and not for very fancy types of execution. So what I'm going to have to do here at the command prompt, which by the way, you can access here. You'll want to go to programs. And you have to look for the programs if you're using Windows 7, the 64-bit version as I am. You'll have to look under the older version of the programs, accessories, and the command prompt. Now I've right mouse clicked this and made a shortcut, send to, and the desktop. So having done that, I created this shortcut. And it's always going to stay here at the top of the screen, making it much easier for me to access the command prompt. What I'm going to do is to right mouse click and open it. And now we see yet another window open up. So I'm going to have these windows all just sitting here so we can take a look at what's going on rather easily. Here, this starts up in a location. This is the cursor, this blinking thing here. This starts up in essentially my documents folder. That's my computer. But I really want to, and here comes a little bit of a DOS command, I want to get it over to this folder named J in which I've stored my programs. And I've stored them here just to keep them segregated from everything else. So the command to do that is change directory and then backslash J. When I do that, you'll see the prompt changes. And now this tells me I'm actually by default located where these programs are. Now, if I want to run this prep a zero bat file, I just don't have to say the bat. I just say the front part. So I'm going to put the cursor here and I'm going to say prep a zero and hit the enter key. Oh, I've got a bit of a problem here. This is not recognized as a command. Well, now why might that be? Hmm. Let's take a look at this here. And we notice a bit of a problem here. The problem is, you might remember, this started out as a different name. I didn't save this. I had changed to the proper location of that. Let's go back here. Here's another little operating system command from the very old days of computers. CLS will clear this screen so that it's a little easier to see. Now if I do prep A0, I should be OK. What happened was I had forgotten to save this file. Kind of handy, you get to see a bit of an error. You do have to save the file so that it can be found this way and executed. Now what's happening here? Well, here's the commands that have executed. This is just a remark, and the remark is echoed up here. This path simply tells the system where to find this program. And I'm doing this this way in this little command file so that you don't have to mess around changing a system environmental variable where this might otherwise be stored. That's a real pain in the neck in working with Java. The folks who write the technical documentation make it sound like it's very simple to do that. It's not simple to do that. It's error prone. And it's one of the big hangups where people can get held up for hours trying to learn how to compile a Java program, especially in the PC environment. That's why what I did here in setting this thing up was I let the Java software get installed where it goes by default. All the program files go there. And then we simply put this path command in every one of our little command files. And you don't have to monkey with your system to change some very arcane setting of the system variables. In any case, what's happened here? Well, as I mentioned, the Java compiler, this thing here, is rather terse. There were no problems. So the only thing you see is a little remark I put in here. If this is the last line, then there aren't any errors and you should go ahead. But if there are some errors, they're going to appear in here. 
In fact, they may appear even above this. So th this line is a bit misleading. You'll have to look between these lines. There may be error messages. And I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. What do we do with this now? This is only halfway there. What we need to do is have a file that's run this program. And I've already prepared such a file here so that I can show you what it is. And you'll get these files as well. So here, run a zero. If I go here and open the run a zero bat file, so let's open that. And you'll see here the path statement is the same. This change directory is the same, so I can find code if I'm looking at it. But now I'm running the Java program. I don't have to put dot .java after it. By not doing that, this is going to be taken to be a class. This is in the same place here. You'll notice if I scroll down here, I now have this class as well as this Java. This was just created at this moment, and it's just about 8.15 now. So here, by taking this and saying Java just that name. This is going to run the class. Let's do that right now. In fact, I'm going to go right here. I'll say CLS to clear the screen and I'll say run capital A zero. And I have the same problem. You'll get to see it twice. And let's save that. So we're looking in the proper place now. Here if I say run a zero, we see all this rigmarole and the output that we're looking for. Hi there, you lucky people. That's as much as it takes to do this. It's a two-step process. You could enter these commands right here at the prompt, but I don't suggest you do that because then you're going to lose track of what you entered. And these are complicated commands, and it's easy to get them wrong. It's really worthwhile to have things set up this way. And that's why I've given you all these files so that you have here all of these bat files that will orchestrate the running of these programs for you. It's really as simple as simply getting into the DOS command prompt and doing that. But let me show you something else now. I'll close that up. Let me show you a program here that intentionally has an error in it. And I call this just one boo-boo. So here I'm opening that this is the same program you just looked at, but I made an intentional mistake here. What I did was I put these bunch of X's after this quote and before that closing parenthesis. Now, this is not going to be recognized by the Java compiler. It's not according to the rules of grammar of Java. So this is a mistake. I've stored it as boo-boo.java, but you'll see it's still named hello. So when I go to process this, and let me clear this off. And we'll go down here. I do have a boo-boo.bat. This is only going to go so far as trying to compile this program. And let's take a look at this. I'll edit that. And you see what's happening here. I had once again the wrong place there. What's going to happen is it's going to attempt to compile this program. I now will get some complaint from the Java compiler because it's not going to understand what this is. But the way it tells me is going to be a little bit cryptic. So here I'm just going to say boo boo because that's what I named this patch file. And when I do that, here's what I get. It's telling me this program, line number nine. Well, I don't have line numbers here with Notepad. If I had a fancier text editor, I would probably have line numbers. The programs here are all very short. You're not going to make too many mistakes in them, but basically you'll have to count these lines. So in line number nine, that's line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is this line. It's telling me that I have here, it's expecting this closing parenthesis, but it's finding instead at this point as it scans forward, it's finding that and it's confused. Now, illegal start of expression, and it's once again talking to this, the little carrot is at this point, so it's really getting confused as to what this should be interpreted as because it's seeing this instead of that early on. I have two errors here that are being reported to me.
and I would have to clean these up. Well, let's just clean them up at this point to see what happens. I know what the error is because I put it in. I'm taking that out. I could go File and Save. Now if I go here and compiling the program with this booboo -boo batch file, if I do that now, well, I'm getting some other kind of a problem here, aren't I? And what might that be? And this is another problem that you might come up with, and it's handy we see this. What's happening here is that I've got an inconsistency. I've named the file here booboo.java, but internally I still have this name. I have to correct that. The easy way to correct it, given what we're doing right here, would be to do this and to change the name here so that there is a consistency. Booboo.java, booboo here. Let's remember to save it. Now, what I have to do is once again repeat this attempt to compile the program. I'll clear this screen and then I will say here, this is this booboo -boo file. Bit confusing. Better if we name these things run or compile instead of naming it the same as the program. That could get to be confusing. So here's kind of an example of what not to do. But let's just finish this up. I'll do booboo -boo here as this batch file. And now we find that this compiles properly. I didn't have that last remark line in here, so I really don't see anything coming up between my attempt to compile and the return of the prompt. So hopefully this is going to help you. In the next video, I'm going to show you how this process works for some more complex programs that are a lot more fun to see because the output they produce is more interesting than what you've got going on here. Let's take a look at that next video when you get a chance.